we are welcoming actually not one speaker, but a whole group of people, namely the local chapters and community working group of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. And their mission is to um, uh, improve the, um, not only the existing local chapters, but also make it easier for new chapters to form or for local communities to organize them in other ways. Um, before the start, the talk launches, um, there's, going, there's a pad that you can write your questions into. The pad is linked from the details page uh, on the schedule. Um, and after the talk is finished, we will go through the questions that you have come up with. Hello. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Maggie Polly, and I am on the Local Chapters and Communities Working Group representing OpenStreetMap US. I've been involved with OpenStreetMap for many years now in different capacities, and I'm happy to be here with you at State of the Map today. Today's presentation features seven members of the Local Chapters and Communities Working Group talking about what the LCC WG does, who we are, and how you can get involved. Eugene, over to you. Thanks, Maggie. Hello, everyone. My name is Eugene, and I am from the Philippines. I have been mapping an OpenStreetMap for almost 13 years now, and have been an OpenStreetMap Foundation member since 2016. Currently, I serve as the chair of the local chapters and communities working group, and I am here to explain how the working group came about. Anyway, as we all know, OpenStreetMap is a global project. But mappers and volunteers are self-organizing at the local level to collaborate with each other and to hold events such as workshops, mapathons, and mapping parties. As an organization with a global mission, the OpenStreetMap Foundation may not always be best placed to reach and support such mappers, especially people speaking in languages other than English. This is the reason why the Foundation set up the Local Chapters Working Group, or LCWG, in 2011. This working group was tasked with formulating an, an affiliation scheme to support the creation of and recognize local chapters. The idea is that these local chapters are in the best position to support OpenStreetMap at a local level. The LCWG's task was finally done in August 2014 when the OpenStreetMap Foundation Board approved the template agreement that is now signed between recognized local chapters and the foundation. The working group then became inactive and has effectively been disbanded. Since then, eight local chapters have been recognized by the foundation, all of them representing local communities in Europe, I must note. And in every state of the map since 2016, there has been a local chapters congress session where representatives of local chapters, as well as members of other local communities, meet together to share ideas, best practices, and issues that affect local chapters and their mapping communities. Pivotally, during the local chapters congress at State of the Map 2018, attendees agreed to revive the local chapters working group. The idea is that the working group would provide a framework for the foundation to support the growth of local chapters and other local communities. And so in September 2019, the local chapters and communities working group or LCCWG started regular monthly meetings and the OpenStreetMap Foundation Board approved the relaunch of the LCCWG as an official working group in late 2019. Currently, we have 10 members based in eight countries spread throughout the world. So, what exactly is the LCCWG working on? Well, the working group has decided to start focusing on three broad aims. First, building local community cohesion. We aim to explore and develop ideas for the OpenStreetMap Foundation to support the growth of local chapters and local communities. Second, facilitating a global exchange of ideas. We aim to provide local chapters and local communities with venues and channels to exchange ideas and share best practices. And third, improving the OSMF affiliation scheme. We aim to review the, ro the role of local chapters within the foundation and make recommendations as to how the affiliation scheme can be further improved. Now that I have given you a brief introduction to the local chapters and communities working group, a few of my colleagues will now share some of the things that we have been working on during the past several months. First off, we have Clifford. 
Hi, I'm Clifford Snow from Mount Vernon, Washington. Let me say that I'm really disappointed in not being in Cape Town in person. Instead, you get me on video with my COVID lack of a haircut. For those not familiar, Mount Vernon, Washington is a monetized rural community located about halfway between Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia. I've been an active mapper since about 2011, when I was first introduced to OpenStreetMap by Hurricane Coast, Steve's much better half. As a member of the local chapters and community working group, I'm going to talk a little bit about our recent survey we conducted with the existing local chapters and communities. As a new group, we want to better understand local chapters, how they are created, what benefits they derive from being a local chapter, and what improvements they would like to see in the local chapter agreement. We asked for input from all the existing local chapters, as well as those in progress or considering applying. We haven't completed the full review of the survey. We are all volunteer group after all. But once we are done, we plan to share the results with the community. Here are some of the key findings from the survey. The first two are to improve the application process for new chapters. One suggestion is to create a checklist of what is needed to become a local chapter. And second, they recommend having a liaison to help shepherd the community through the application process. Local chapters would also like to see stronger ties with the foundation. Two examples of ways to strengthen the ties are to one, require that the foundation get input from the local chapters on significant issues. And secondly, better utilize the existing advisory board. Another key recommendation is for tools to help build communities. Tools like Brian E. Rocher's microcosms, which allow communities to create groups, much like many of the social media platforms do. They'd also like to see better communication methods to make it easier to contact mappers in their area. They also need a way to reach groups of mappers, not just one mapper at a time. They would like to standardize ways to welcome new mappers in their area. Finally, they have strongly recommended having a link on the OSM website for new mappers to sign up their local chapters. I was surprised to learn that at the time of the survey, five organizations have a code of conduct, with six in the process of implementing one. Since this survey, my own local chapter in the United States has since formally adopted a code of conduct. If you're interested in your organization adopting the code of conduct, please contact me. We'll circle back in a bit to talk more about the code of conduct. Two other aspects of demographics I found interesting was that most reported an increase in membership. Reason given for the increase ranged from having better internet availability in the country, using funding to reach out to attract new mappers, and to offering of reduced registration fees to attend their regional state of the map conferences. Once we finalize the report, local chapters can learn more about how to attract new members. Finally, we ask the one thing that the foundation should be doing. The simple answer is the local chapters and communities are looking for more support. From help getting their application for local chapter status approved, to be more involved with critical decisions to financial support through programs like the new micro grants program. The need for financial support varies from no help is needed to it would be a game changer. There's also a call for more language and cultural diversity along with adopting of a code of conduct. The foundation adopting a code of conduct is outside the scope of our working group, but I trust the foundation will learn from the wisdom of our local chapters. My time is up. Next up is Joost. Thank you, Clifford. Uh, I am Joost. I'm a co-founder of the Belgian OpenStreetMap chapter. I'm a volunteer in this working group and the membership working group, and I'm a board member of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Uh, this working group is there to, to learn from what all the various local groups are doing and, and try to apply what, what can be learned there on a global level. So um, as one example of an exercise we did is a, a review of the websites of all the official local chapters. 
Um, and, and this comparison of websites is quite interesting because they all have basically the same mission and still they offer uh, quite diverse solutions to the same problem. So all of their websites focus on, on helping mappers finding the community or, or both uh, to help outsiders understand what OpenStreetMap is all about. Now, uh, might be a bit surprising, but none of these websites are really map-centered. On some of them, it's even uh, impossible to find an interactive map. Uh, there are some cool attempts to, to try and build the content around the map, especially the, the Czech website is, is uh, quite use, uh, successful at doing that. Um, they also uh, offer several points of contact, and, and it's interesting how some of them offer single point of contact side communication so that people can send a mail and it, it arrives to several people in the community. Uh, others focus on, on just listing the, the community channels, and some of them do both. Um, now, this, this wide diversity, it, it shows that uh, there are ever so many ways to tell the OpenStreetMap story. Um, most of them offer a striking difference, though, to the, the well, technical-looking OpenStreetMap Foundation website and the very mappy website that is OpenStreetMap.org. Um, in fact, uh, the welcome mat, which is at uh, welcome.openstreetmap.org, is, is the most similar global project or, or the project that looks most similar to many of the local chapters' websites. Um, now, uh, several of the IDs offered uh, by the local chapters' websites uh, could be used to improve the openstreetmap.org, which is, in the end, our, our main landing page. Um, and, and I believe that switching OpenStreetMap.org to, uh, to a logic like, like many of these pages could be technically uh, quite simple if we uh, just move the current website to OpenStreetMap.org-map and put a new landing page in front of it. Uh, this landing page could then be the glue that binds all the, the core infrastructure and projects together, even if, if those uh, uh, projects aren't really OSMF uh, projects in themselves. Um, this could look a, a little similar to the current uh, welcome.openstreetmap.org or uh, the wiki.openstreetmap.org landing pages. Um, subdomains uh, and, and so things like the help the, the help site uh, could be more prominently shown there. Um, but it, it could also uh, help to, to show the local groups um, um, more prominently. Um, and the survey that Clifford was just talking about, um, it shows that um, many of these local groups would really like to be more visible on the global website. Uh, about two thirds of, of, of them uh, really would like us to, to work on that. Um, now, uh, as a working group, what we intend to do is, is to try and build uh, momentum in the community for these kind of changes. Uh, we want to talk to the volunteers who are actually doing this programming and to the OpenStreetMap Foundation board uh, to, to help facil uh, facilitate uh, projects like these, uh, especially if there is uh, money involved. Now, uh, over to Ben for our next project. Hello and welcome. This is Ben uh, presenting the Community First um, Tools part from our presentation, taking over from uh, Joost. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so, um, why are we? Uh, why do we feel that we need extra uh, tools? Uh, because the OSM website currently is built for mapping, but it does not have a lot of facilities for um, organizing uh, communities. And OSM is only as strong as its community. What are we doing? So uh, we are um, working on two things. So um, making it easier for uh, local communities to welcome new mappers and for um, community groups to organize on um, the OSM website. Uh, so let's first get started with um, uh, welcoming new uh, mappers. Um, so what does this look like? Um, this is the OSM Belgium welcome tool uh, as an example. There are others as well, um, but just to um, uh, let you get a feel of, of how this works. Um, so basically you log into the tool, I'm logged in here, um, and uh, you get a list of uh, new mappers for the day. Um, and here, for example, um, everyone has been welcomed uh, already. Um, but uh, we select one, for example, this person. Um, 
And here um, the tool allows you to generate a message. So we generate a welcome message. Um, and um, you copy the message, it sends you to OSM.org, you paste the message, you add a nice subject to it, blah, blah, but then something proper. Um, and this message contains in the language that we guesstimate for the mapper, depending on the region, um, it contains all what they need to know to uh, join events, uh, where they can find the community, uh, social media, and everything. Uh, related to um, to the Belgian community, basically. Uh, so now this mapper is properly welcomed to the community, and it's up to him, her, um, to to join or not. So what we want to do, we want to make it easier for communities to to welcome new mappers, even if they don't have the resources to set this up themselves. In this case, OSM Belgium did have the resources to do this. Uh, but not every local community can, and we want to make it even easier. Um, part of this is also that we that we would like to have the feature to be able to send messages via the OSM API. Um, currently, um, as you saw, the workflow is to copy-paste messages into the OSM.org UI. Uh, it would, of course, be much better if we could um, uh, directly um, create the messages in the welcoming tool and send them from there. Um, there are also other applications that could benefit from them, like, for example, the whole tasking manager, where it has to ask for uh, email addresses now to be able to send messages. And there are probably other applications I've heard about that could use this feature. So how can you help? Um, first of all, you can definitely join us in the local chapters and community working group. Uh, we're a nice bunch of people, so please join. Um, and there are more details in this uh, in this issue, uh, what is being worked on in relation to um, the welcome tool. So you're very welcome to join. Um, then secondly, um, an idea by Brian um, is OSM microcosms. So um, this idea is to, to add a feature to the OSM.org website to allow communities to organize themselves. Um, and to organize events and so on. Um, this is very attractive to me personally because it, it better reflects the reality of OSM communities on the website. Um, it allows the formation of geographical or topical groups. It allows these groups to organize events, monitor chain sets, and much more. So um, here is a screenshot of uh, one of these examples. So here we have um, the, an example mapping DC microcosm. Um, there is description and in this case a geographical location. Um, there are organizers. You can join um, this uh, group uh, if you're interested in it. Um, it lists uh, events, recent events and upcoming events, the existing members and here it lists the recent changes in uh, the general area around, um, around this group. So there is already a, a demo instance online. Um, so you feel free to try it out. You do need to create your a new OpenStreetMap account for this instance because it's completely separate from the existing uh, OSM website. Um, but if you create an account, you can start playing with it um, and get in touch with Brian if you see um, if you see anything that could be better or if you uh, see bugs or anything like that. Okay, so that's about it for the tools, uh, handing it off to the next person. Um, and uh, thanks a lot for listening. Thank you, Ben. Uh, so my name is Rob, and I have been uh, contributing to OpenStreetMap for probably about eight years now uh, within the United Kingdom, where I live. And uh, about a, a two or three years ago, we decided to set up a, a local community uh, for the United Kingdom to formalize that as a, uh, a not-for-profit organization and to affiliate ourselves with the OpenStreetMap Foundation as what they call a local chapter. I'm, I'm also one of the directors of that organization. And that's exactly what I'm here to talk to you about is the OpenStreetMap Foundation's local chapter scheme. Um, what is it? What are the benefits of it? And how do you become a local chapter? 
So the very first thing to note is there's absolutely no rush to become established as a local chapter. Um, but when you do, there are a couple of benefits that come from becoming a local chapter. The first is that status symbol of being able to say that you are officially affiliated. Uh, and obviously you can pass that message on to whoever you're engaging with as part of your local group, uh, whether it's uh, a public sector government body or whether it's organisations uh, or other volunteer mappers in your, your region. They, they might be impressed by the fact that you're affiliated and they might like to see that uh, as part of your dealings with them. The second main reason is um, by becoming a local chapter, the OpenStreetMap Foundation grants you a right to use the OpenStreetMap uh, trademark within your within your region. So whilst there's no rush to becoming a local chapter, you should start by focusing on becoming the best local group or local community that you can be within your region. So you want to be looking to set up a, a good group of local mappers and local contributors um, who uh, meet regularly, um, maybe go on some mapathons, and uh, you have more members who are contributing back to OpenStreetMap. And once you start to build up, you get to a sort of a critical number of people. You might want to be going slightly further. The, the next stage from that informal group of people is to become a formal organization. Um, this is a couple of reasons why, why you might want to become a, a formal organization. One of the main ones is if you want to set up a group bank account um, in order to, to um, deal with some um, money issues like um, hiring venues uh, or, or buying some shared equipment to help you do some mapping. The key thing when you become a formal organization um, is that the organization type that you set up is a non-profit group and that it is easy for members to join the group. Now, those two things are important because later down in the line, when you do want to become a local chapter, those are the two main criteria that the OpenStreetMap Foundation will look out for before allowing you to become a local chapter. Um, it's probably a good idea as well when you are going through that process of setting up a, an organisation uh, is to share the uh, constitution or the articles of association whilst they're still in draft form um, before you've officially set up. If you share those with with us uh, and with other open street mappers, we'll be able to cast an eye over them and look out for any obvious issues that might prevent you from becoming a local chapter at some point down the line. Now, um, after some time, you, you may have uh, decided that yeah, it's going well as a, good, as a local organization and you now want to take that next step to become a, an offici uh, officiated local chapter. Um, now, when you are ready to become affiliated, uh, you need to reach out to the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Um, good first point of call is probably the, the board email address. Uh, and from there, they can take you on the next steps as to how to become a local chapter of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Katerika from the OSM community in Uganda and also a member of the local chapters and communities working group. So if you are a member of a local OSM community out there, I'd really like to encourage you to join uh, this working group. Uh, everyone is, is welcome to join, um, help uh, to join us to build local community cohesion, uh, to facilitate a global exchange of ideas, but also to improve the local chapters affiliation scheme so that more countries can become uh, local chapters. Uh, joining the local chapters and uh, communities working group is very easy. Uh, simply get in touch via local at osmfoundation.org and then join the next meeting. Um, you can also join the discussion uh, via Telegram, uh, via Riot and Matrix and IRSC. Uh, you can find all these links uh, on the uh, local chapters and communities working group official page uh, here. 
uh, but you also find information on when meetings do happen and how you can uh, join. Um, so looking forward to uh, seeing you join uh, the uh, Communities Working Group. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. There will also be a virtual Local Chapters and Communities Congress this year. This is not only for existing local chapters, this is a chance for communities around the world to get together and talk about community organizing around OpenStreetMap and share opportunities, challenges, and try to solve some problems together. Here's a link for a form that we're hoping you will fill out to help us narrow down a date for the event. And also we are asking participants to record a short introductory video so that when we have the event, we don't spend an hour introducing ourselves and we all walk into the virtual room ready to go and we already know who's there. So please fill this out. And thank you so much for joining us all today. We hope you learned something about the LCCWG and you are excited to get involved. A big thank you to the organizers for putting this together and for holding space for us to talk. Uh, we look forward to your questions and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. So there are actually no questions in the pad. Um, just the, the comment that you've put in there about the, the, the links from, from the chat. But could you maybe, question from me, uh, could you outline how you organize your work in the working group? Do you have like mainly a mailing list or regular meetings on a virtual, or, I don't know what, Jitsi, big group button or phone calls or whatever? How do you, how, how does the group actually work? I can jump in and take that one if you can hear me. Yeah, it appears that the sort of the, the mixing is kind of uh, we're we're all uh, we're all being streamed right now. But yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we uh, we've tried a few different platforms. Really, we've uh, had a go at a video, um, both Jitsi and Big Blue Button. Um, I think we're we're now shifting back to an audio only option back on the Mumble servers um, because of uh, bandwidth problems in all the different regions that we're we're trying to cover. Um, the meetings are monthly. I think I'm right in saying <laughs> the time has disappeared very quickly over the last few months. we have all been locked down, but I think it's monthly, all right. And uh, and then we've got the a Telegram group uh, for, for bits in between. Right. There's a there's a question being typed just as we speak. It's not it's not complete yet. So let's let's give it another couple seconds. Can someone touch on the benefits and issues with having a globalized welcome welcoming standard to these local chapters? And these is different cultures, systems and such may benefit from variability, but seamlessness might be good. I, I guess the question is about sort of how 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 much of a standard is there that, that is expected or extended to local chapters and in how far are we differing across cultures or regions? Has anyone actually heard me speaking? Uh, yes, hello. Hello, Ben. Yes, OK. Um, so if it's about the welcoming part, uh, I think I can say a few things there. Um, so uh, well, currently, there is nothing um, 
on the on, well there is nothing on the main website to welcome new mappers and to actually inform them about the fact that um, OSM has multiple local communities there is nothing really there um, and how are they supposed to discover this um, so yeah I think let's first try and fix that problem and then see um, what kind what type of um, uh, welcoming we should be doing and what fits every community? So I, I hope that sort of answers the question. And I'm not sure. Maybe someone else in the group uh, has some thoughts. Yeah, maybe just clarify that it's uh, that it wouldn't be like one global tool to fit all, but that it's it's uh, something you would adapt to local needs. Or maybe that's what you said, and I just repeated it. Right, so seeing that we don't have any other questions, um, just uh, let, let, me, let me repeat that you're planning this uh, local chapters congress, so anyone uh, in any region, uh, not only those who already have a local chapter, but also those who have some other organization or are trying to set something up, welcome to participate in that and you've posted a, a link to a google form um so that that would be uh, the the next the next step does anyone want a closing word i'll just encourage everyone hi everybody to um fill out that poll and let us know we love for as many countries to have representation at that congress as possible we're looking at late October or November, so there's time to plan and to reach out directly to anybody on the working group and get involved. Please join us. Right. Thank you all for being here and for doing the work on, on the local chapters and communities working group. And uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.